Well, joining me again is Pat from the Property Press. And Pat, uh, previously you made mention, and it was a real tease about some of the research that uh, Property Press has done. Can we have a look at that today? And, and also, who does that actual research for you? I'd love to share it with you, Wayne. Uh, the research company we've used for the last few years is Horizon Research. Okay. Uh, Horizon um, conduct research for a number of multinationals, local companies, iwi, government agencies, etc. Okay. So they're, they're a fully equipped professional research company. Yeah, so it's independent, it's very, very professional. How often are they doing this for you, Pat? Uh, this is the 11th research program they've done for us in a five and a half year series. We do it every six months, but we have been ah, okay. con having research conducted since 1990. So we've, we've done it over the years. And uh, nowadays it's, it's much easier because you can conduct a research of several thousand people overnight on a on an online research, yep. whereas previously in the 90s and the early 2000s, the, have, the research company would have to have interviewers go to interviewees' own homes and spend uh, an hour or two conducting it, so it was a very laborious wow. process. Okay. Now it's really uh, streamlined, it's great. So we're getting uh, quicker information, I guess they can then ask more questions and it's Throughout turning around in, yep. a, in a tight time frame. Yes, certainly. and. Uh, we, we rely heavily on it uh, so we know how we're going and it's very, very useful information for the real estate industry and for home buyers and sellers. And, and what sort of things are you finding or getting out of that research? Well, the first thing we need to know, Wayne, is uh, first, sounds a bit selfish, but how are we doing? Um, what's the relevance of property press in the marketplace yeah, these days? You, you've got to rely on more than anecdotes. Uh, we, and we want uh, a KPI for us is, is how the readership is going. Mm -hmm. we're, we're a weekly... Uh, for most areas a weekly publication so we want to know what how the readership is going and then we want to know what are the people's future <coughs> buying and selling intentions uh, where are people intending to live and buy homes and uh, their house price expectations so all this information we can collate and pass it on to the real estate agents that are working with us with property press uh, okay so one is uh, checking and working out the relevance so that certainly if uh, if i'm a consumer looking at advertising i understand the value sitting in that but then that extra bit of data on, on trends, I guess, going forward, uh, I guess that's of interest to the real estate agents you're dealing with? Oh, absolutely. Um, if they need to know the future buying intentions of the people in the marketplace, mm -hmm. and uh, they also, it's very useful for us to know how many people are definitely going to sell, where people are, are looking to buy, etc. It's all very interesting stuff. Then we can... Uh, through the channels, we can guide home sellers better into their marketing investment. And can we have a look? Have you got an example of um, of those questions? I know you've got some reports sitting here, Pat. Yes, we certainly do. Um, firstly, readership. Um, the f discovered that we have, on average, eight hundred and four thousand readers per week, which is a massive. It makes stunning, probably press far and away yeah, the yeah, most the stunning. most read weekly yep. publication in New Zealand. Now, why are people reading Property Press so much and even looking at websites? So one of the questions in this latest research survey, for example, is for which of these reasons, if any, do you look at property publications and websites? So do you know that almost half of the respondents replied to dream a little? So it's, <laughs> it's aspirational. Yeah. Readership of Property Press is aspirational. Uh, I like to see what's being sold in my neighbourhood. Yep. I want to understand property values and, and, and the like. So I want to check how my property compares in price. That's still almost a third of respondents. So there's, it's the aspirational side of things. Now, does that, and previously uh, we've spoken about passive and active buyers, does that relate to the passive and active buyers? Certainly. This is a key question and a key finding that we'll share with you today, Wayne, is that, uh, here's, again, I'll read the question. Some people have told us they weren't actually intending to buy a home when they first saw the property they eventually purchased. Did that happen to you? Mm -hmm. Now, in September 2015, 14.7% of respondents said yes, that it did. So to put numbers on this, we, we hear anecdotally that people buy passively, etc. But to put numbers on that, 14.7% of respondents. The Real Estate Institute of New Zealand tells us in the 12 months end of September 2015, there were 88,340 residential sales. Mm -hmm. So 14.7% of that is 12,986 sales in the last 12 months, or 265 sales a week, 
were made to people that hadn't intended to buy at that time. So that's a true measure of passive buying. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for Pat. Isn't that interesting? So we see the value of the publication. We see uh, the people producing it, checking on it each time as we go. And again, we go back into that detail of a passive uh, buyer versus an active buyer. And if, uh, if that stacks in another 12,000 odd sales, uh, isn't that fantastic? So uh, certainly when we're selling, we don't want to miss that in the market. Uh, Pat, as always, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure, Wayne. I thank look forward you. to sharing some more information with you and the viewers. Thank you.